everybody, and welcome to another episode of Radman Reviews. This is a special Valentine's Day inspired episode, as you can tell by this red rose I am holding. Much like a contestant on The Bachelor or Bachelorette. On today's show, we'll be reviewing several new Netflix items and new content offerings from our good friends at Netflix. Let's see, we'll be talking about Girlfriend's Day, starring Bob Odenkirk. Then, after that, Michael Bolton's big, sexy Valentine's Day special. Finally, we'll review a not super romantic show, but very good, very amazing, and you know what, it is actually kind of a romantic show, called The Santa Clarita Diet. Yes, everybody, today on Radman Reviews, we'll be talking about more Netflix stuff, and you know what? Netflix is the best. Universal, just about everyone can get it. Everyone should have it by now, and if you don't... Not that I condone pirating, because it's a very, you know, pirating, not the best practice, but these shows are terrific, and I want you all to watch them. So do what you gotta do. So let's start off with Netflix's new made-for-Netflix movie, Girlfriend's Day. Written by one of the stars of the film, Bob Odenkirk. He's one of the writers. There's, oh, like, another two writers, I think. I don't know what to say about this one. I'm not even going to really look at my notes, because I'm just going to go off the cuff. This was a very... It was absurd. It was definitely an absurdist's movie. Okay, well, it follows... Uh, his name's Ray, and Bob Odenkirk is the main character, plays Ray. He's a greeting card writer, specifically romance cards. He doesn't write, you know, hey, welcome to Disney World. He doesn't write those kind of cards. He writes cards like love cards, you know, Valentine's Day kind of crap. And when then the, uh, all the, and then there's this new girlfriend's day that comes up, and he decide. He, this is such a this is this movie is too hard to even talk about because there's like eight thousand different layers. I guess that's that's what's really hard to go off of. You don't know if you want to take this seriously or not. You seriously, you're like you're watching it and you're like, okay. This premise is they're all, they all work in the greeting, they're all greeting card writers. And they're all just about as full of themselves as regular writers are. So they talk about writing as if they're the writers on a TV show or they're the writers of a movie or something like that. But they're the writers of a greeting card. Like, not even five sentences usually in a greeting card. You have to just assume that's the funny... That's like the comedy. That's it's so hard to talk about. You have to even like just keeping that in mind that everyone takes greeting card writing so seriously. Nobody questions it. You have that's like it becomes one of the funniest jokes towards the end of the movie, I think. It's not I don't again, it's and it's the the tone of the film, the tone of the entire movie is very serious. I mean, there's some obvious, like, obvious jokes, like, as Bob Odenkirk writing, you're gonna get some obvious jokes, but everything is so, everything is so layered that it's, like, hard to, hard to tell when they're joking. <laughs> and I can see where people would, that would turn people off, but for me, by the end of it, I was, like, just, like, kind of... Like, my mouth was just wide open. It's like, oh my god, I can't, can't believe they were, this is on, they put this on Netflix. I can't believe that, first of all, this idea that was made is on Netflix now. It's the weirdest, probably the weirdest, and maybe one of the most surreal, surrealist things I've, I've watched on Netflix, to tell you the truth. But... With all that in mind, it still is very entertaining. It's got some very funny people. Bob Odenkirk, Rich Sommer, I think his name is, from Mad Men. I should have written more people down, but I didn't. I just wrote down Bob Odenkirk. Andy Richter's in it. That's his name. Um, 
let's see, who else? It's just a bunch of, like, television comedy people, and they're all acting very uh, genuinely. It's not, like, they're not playing it up for laughs. It's very, very funny. And you can tell, if you if you follow Bob Odenkirk at all, it totally feels like, like a Bob Odenkirk, like, character and Bob Odenkirk writing, because he always plays the really, like, rock bottom, down on his luck, what, like, Saul Goodman, <laughs> like, now, and if you watch, I mean, I'm not gonna spoil uh, Better Call Saul, but, like, if you watch the first episode of Be Better Call Saul, you know he's not. A major deal. He's like, he's he's rock bottom. He's down on his luck, you know. And that's kind of what that's kind of Odin Kirk's niche character. That's what I love about Bob Odenkirk. And you know, Bob and David and David Cross and Mr. Show and all that kind of good stuff. So if you don't watch that, you should. If you don't watch this, you should. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a four out of five because I liked it. I would probably watch it again. If someone was like, "Hey, have you seen Gr Girlfriend's Day? Would you recommend it?" I would say, "I do recommend it." If you like weird, not exactly comedies, not exactly romantic, not exactly funny things, like I do, because I do. Right, Rose? Right. Okay, and our next review for this episode of Radman Reviews is Michael Bolton's Big Sexy Valentine. <laughs> is my kind of comedy. The Lonely Island and Comedy Bang Bang teaming up to make a musical variety show for Netflix is like, it's, it was made for people like me. It was made for me. Specifically, I'm pretty sure they just made this for me. I'm like, yes, more of this! More, more, more! I'm a big fan of the stupid comedy that comes with Comedy Bang Bang. And I'm a big fan of Comedy Bang Bang. It wasn't like, well, I guess they kind of were all involved because either way, they were in it, or um, Akiva Schaefer from The Lonely Island wrote, and Scott Aukerman wrote, and a bunch of people from Comedy Bang Bang on The Lonely Island wrote for it. And they all performed in it. Like, Andy Samberg played Kenny G, which was probably one of the funniest things ever. Um, that might have been my favorite, my favorite sketch in that entire, entire movie, entire special or whatever, was uh, Andy Samberg playing Kenny G. Now, you wouldn't think that Michael Bolton would be the one to be injected into this comedy, this brand of weird, <laughs> nonsense comedy that comes along with these people. Um, but he works really well because he's got this, like, almost kind of monotonous, deadpan delivery that it just works so perfectly with this brand of humor. And uh, it, it tickled me every time he, he said a line just like in his like Duh. and then every once in a while he would just like inject just these runs these vocal runs Ooh. very amazing and then Andy Samberg kind of did the exact same uh, bit with with a uh, alto sax I think Kenny G plays just every once in a while inject injecting that in. and it's just a fun fun movie fun special and my favorite thing my, my the concept behind the whole special is amazing. Like, just a, a good example of, like, how this humor works. It's, like, how this how this is set up. It's, like, so the first song is a Christmas song. And then Santa comes and asks Michael Bolton that Christmas is in danger. You know, parents to make babies on Valentine's Day. So the only way he can do that is to make a Valentine's Day special. The only way to save Christmas is for him to make a Valentine's Day special. Think about that, everybody. Just think about that concept. They put their heads together, their little noggins, and they came up with that strange twist on a concept that has happened a million times. You get these conventions, and then you just kind of, you bust them, and you don't even need to pay attention to them anymore. And that's why it's, that's, that's what I love about Comedy Bang Bang. Um, it's like, uh, I don't know, it's like this weird Salvador Dali version of Saturday Night Live, you know? 
it's just it, they it's a great com it's great 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 improv comedy I love it and you could tell there was some good um, improvising and good stuff there was some even a deleted scene with uh, Claudio Doherty that you can watch that Netflix has under the trailers tab it's so funny and uh, she's amazing actually so I would suggest watching that but I don't know what else I can say about this uh, this nonsense it was terrific um, I'm gonna actually give this as close to five stars out of five. Five roses, you know? I'm gonna give this five, almost five roses. Like, I'm gonna do four and a half just for, just for conversion sakes. Four and a half roses, but, um, yeah. I liked it. And I laughed a lot. And watch it with your loved ones. Or watch it alone. You know? Watching things alone might be your most pleasurable thing, might be the best part of your day. So if you if it's that time of day for you to watch something alone, watch this. And now, finally, I could not be more excited to talk to you folks about this show. Um, every once in a while, Netflix will just throw this random television show barely any warning you get some trailers like maybe a month ahead of time and it, you don't know what to expect you kind of go into it with weird expectations but netflix does this very well they did it with stranger things i remember watching the trailer for stranger things and just being so like like what the hell is this i want to watch it what the hell is this they did it with this show and i remember thinking it feels like a very loose premise and I don't know if I want to watch it right away. I'll wait until people get through it and see what they think. But lucky for me, I gave it a chance. I watched the first episode and I was definitely hooked immediately. I watched the same. The Clarita Diet stars Timothy Oliphant, which is another awesome name. Drew Barrymore, Lionel Barrymore's great-granddaughter, I think. I don't know why I'm telling you folks that. That's a weird thing to say. Um, and then some new people that I'm not sure of. Liv Hewson, who plays the daughter, Abby. And Skylar Gizondo, or Gizondo, depending on how you pronounce Jif or Gif. Um, he plays their neighbor, Eric. The, the, the helpful neighbor, Eric. Um, okay. I barely wrote anything down for this show, just because my memories are still fresh. I just finished it a couple days ago. I'm still, I'm still reeling from it. I mean, it's only 30, they, it's only 10 episodes. They do, um, they try, they stick to like the 22 minute format almost. And, uh, barely do they break 30 minutes per episode. It almost feels like you get a fresh story each episode like they have to tackle a new problem each episode but it still stays within the overall arc of the of what's going on with this family and what is going on with this family you ask well <laughs> let me tell you <laughs> here's the loose premise i thought anything involving zombies i'm, I'm always like all right let's get, give it to me here comes another one so when i saw the trailer for this and i saw that drew barrymore the mother figure the main character becomes a zombie by some random happenstance, um, or undead, whatever. You know, you kind of think, you automatically assume that, okay, this idea has been done before. Like, Fido is a movie where they try to make zombies normalized. Um, uh, like, I guess Warm Bodies is a movie where they try to, like, humanize zombies and stuff like that. And uh, I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll get something similar to that nonsense. After I watched the first episode, and I saw the dynamic between uh, the two, I guess, I'm going to call them the two main characters, because I think this show is not only just about Drew Barrymore, but it's also about uh, her husband, played by Timothy Oliphant, and um, them together trying to tackle this problem as a couple, which is another terrific thing, because... It adds this whole, like, kind of feeling that this is about, this is a show about, like, families trying to tackle tough issues. But really the tough issues is the mom is a murdering zombie. And the dad just cannot handle it. 
Timothy Oliphant plays a, an amazing character who tries to take everything head on, but just cannot handle anything. And his character throughout the entire show, like, I stopped watching everybody else and just focused on him and just, like, laughed, laughed my ass off watching him because his character is so freaking amazing at just being, like, at just saying, like, ridiculous things and just knowing they're ridiculous, knowing he, knowing his situation and how, like horrible and horrifying his situation is, but, like, him still trying to be the positive husband. <laughs> it's very, it's, like, a good, it's a good, uh, metaphor for, like, relationships and marriages and, like, trying to tackle actual real issues, you know? <laughs> like a sick and dying parent kind of thing, you know? And But this just puts a whole new spin on zombies and... Uh, Drew Barrymore kind of lives to, uh, kind of, uh, learns to live, um, by killing bad people, <laughs> I guess. I guess the zombies are so much different than anything I think I've ever, uh, seen in, like, zombie pop culture. Like, um, the zombies become better. Like, once they become a zombie, the people actually become, like, better people. They feel better. And they're, like... They have more energy. That's why it's called the Santa Clarita Diet. It's like a, a self-help, like, it's like a self-help kind of thing, you know? It's like the secret, you know what I mean? They're not, once they become a zombie, then they, they can live their fullest life to their fullest potential. Use their full brain capacity. Of course they're eating dead, rotting human flesh every day, but, yeah, they've got more energy and vim and vigor and they can run for miles and they sleep three hours a night and you know it's that's why the the name is funny the name alone is very hilarious you know they get away with a lot and they can do a lot of stuff and uh they just pull the my favorite thing is like in like weeds and in shows like this where the parents are always trying to keep stuff i don't want to swear keep stuff from their kids you know um it, it, I always feel like that drags on, like the secret aspect drags on, like, ooh, we don't want our kids to find out because what will they think? Who cares? So that show, this show took that approach, the who cares approach. And the daughter, Abby, played by Liv Hewson, uh, one of the most helpful, like, daughter-child characters ever uh, in episodes of the show where there's, like, a ton of touching parent-child moments. Like, you wouldn't expect it out of this show, but it's like a whole episode where Drew Barrymore and, and uh, Liv Hewson just kind of tackle an issue together, and it's like a good mother-bonding, mother-daughter bonding, mother -bonding uh, episode. Again, weird that it would come out of a show about zombies and uh, families murdering other people and, uh, you know, crooked cops. That's a good thing to have for a show that is kind of silly, you know what I mean? And it is kind of silly. And the silly, my favorite thing is like, everyone's reactions to how just crazy and silly their actual like, story and life is. Don't interrupt me, please, thank you. And uh, like, Timothy Oliphant can't handle it. He tries to, he tries to put on a brave face and you can tell that he just cannot handle it. So like the dichotomy between the two characters, like Timothy Oliphant not being able to handle it and like Drew Barrymore is just accepting everything as it comes and uh, kind of loving it. And also Abby, like the daughter, uh, Liv Hewson, uh, she accepts it as it comes and loves every part of it. Like she's not going to school anymore and uh, she can kind of do what she wants and uh, they kind of have to deal with parenting in this new situation and uh, it all like builds up and builds up and then the ending is very good like it's another one of those classic Netflix endings where you're like you're happy like how it went you're happy where it where it could possibly go. Well, you're not happy where it could go, but you're happy that there is potential that it's gonna, it might go somewhere, but with Netflix, you never know if it's gonna go somewhere. You hope it does, but they don't exactly release 
um, any kind of statistics about uh, their ratings, and they don't have to. Um, so you don't know. You don't know how a show is doing. You don't know if people are watching it. You don't know. You don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? I don't even know. I don't like even know how to rate this. Um, this is one of those shows that I could immediately turn back on and watch again. Like I could go. I'm gonna actually. I'm gonna rewatch this soon because as soon as something picks up on Netflix, something good, then everyone starts talking about it. There are things people notice that I didn't notice. There are jokes that I didn't notice that I would like to see. And then I immediately just want to watch it again. That's that's what that's like a, a good marker for a good Netflix show. If, if it has the ability to make you want to watch it like again, like a week later, <laughs> then it's a good friggin show or movie. I, I want to watch this show again. People are talking about it. I'm, I'm seeing all this buzz, I guess. I'm seeing all this stuff. And I'm like, ah, oh, I didn't notice that. Ah, oh, I want to see that. Oh, oh, awesome. Ah, I remember that part. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. I want to see it again. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Chug, 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 chug. Ha ha ha. And I just, I really. I, here, I'm going to point the rose that way, just so it looks better. And I, I'm. Like, I, well, is this a loving show? Is this a show about love? Why, why, why did I pick this show for Valentine's Day, you're asking yourself. Because this is about a loving family in a struggling situation. Stressful situation. What would you do if your mom became a zombie? Because these people don't really know what to do. And they, they, they're trying. They're trying everything. And that's what I love about this show. What do I give it as a rating? I want to give it a perfect rating. Like, if a show can make me want to watch it again and go through all 10 episodes again, like, a week later, that's a 5 out of 5. That's a good 5 out of 5. That, that's good TV, everybody. Is there anything else out there that you watch and you, like, want to watch immediately after you've watched it? Tell me. Leave a comment in this box that's down below. And you know what? Chicken butt. <laughs> that's gonna wrap it up for an episode- this- <laughs> So that's gonna wrap it up for this episode of Radman Reviews. Um, let's see, let's, let's go over what we discussed. We talked about a bunch of Valentine's Day inspired movies. And they're all new. They're all brand spunkin' new on Netflix. We talked about Michael Bolton's big sexy Valentine's Day special looks like this. Watch me flick these pedals and try not to feel uncomfortable. Okay? Look at that. After that, we talked about Girlfriend's Day. Then, finally, we talked about my new favorite show, The Santa Clarita Diet. As you stare into the petals of this rose, listen to these final words. Please, like and subscribe, L uh, leave a comment below, and uh, subscribe for more videos. Also, did I mention, like this video, and uh, I like you. Hello, Goodbye, everybody.